All right, so in this next question, we're again asked to evaluate the function at each specified value of the independent variable and simplify. And in this particular problem, our function is q of x, meaning our independent variable is x, and q of x is equal to 1 over x squared minus 9. And we're asked to evaluate uh, this function at q of 0, q of 3, and q of y plus 3. So I'm going to start with q of 0 first. And once again, whenever you see this, whatever thing is where x should be or wherever, whatever is basically in here, it just means plug this into wherever you see this variable. So I'm going to plug in 0 wherever I see x. And that's going to give me 1 over, and I'm going to do a double parenthesis here, 0 squared minus 9 and uh, zero, 0 squared is just going to be 0 so we're left with 1 over negative 9 or negative 1 ninth that's going to be our answer for part A then for part B we're going to plug in 3 wherever we see x so that's going to give me 1 over and another double parentheses 3 squared minus 9 well, 3 squared is going to be 9, so we're going to be left with 1 over 9 minus 9. And 9 minus 9 is 0, so we're going to have 1 over 0. But remember from our earlier videos where we were graphing and we found that 1 over 0 is actually undefined. So our answer for this one is going to be undefined, which I'm going to abbreviate as just UND. And then now for this one, we have q of y plus 3. And we had a previous problem where uh, you had, like, you, it wasn't just one number f that you had to plug in for x. It was uh, this y plus 3 or some other variable plus some number. And it doesn't, the process doesn't change. You, we're just going to plug in y plus 3 wherever we see x. So I'm going to have 1 over and then y plus 3 squared. y plus 3 squared minus 9. So now I'm going to take y plus 3 and I'm actually going to write out what is y plus 3 squared, which is just y plus 3 times itself. And then that's going to be minus 9. So when we do y plus 3 times itself, we're going to get y squared, because we're, we're, uh, we're foiling here. So we're going to get y squared plus 3y plus 3y, which is just going to be 6y plus 9, and then minus 9. And if you have trouble remembering this, uh, you can always remember the rule that uh, a plus b squared, I believe, is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, which is essentially what we, which is not essentially, it's exactly what we did here. We did, uh, if our a is y and our b is 3, we got y squared plus 2ab uh, plus b squared. So that's how you can remember that rule. Or if you forget that rule and you're on a test and you need to rate, uh, you need to do this really quickly, you can always just write it like this. Uh, and of course, this is all going to be over one. I just didn't write it there for simplicity's sake. But we're going to be left with one over, and then this, these nines will cancel with each other. One over y squared plus six y. And I'm going to leave my answer like that, but. Uh, maybe your teacher wants you to factor out the y so it's y plus or y times y plus 6 some teachers like it in a most in a most simplified form either answer works they both mean the same thing but that's how you do that problem alrighty so in this next question we're given the exact same instructions as the previous questions evaluate the function at each specified value of the independent variable and simplify Except now our function is f of x equals the absolute value of x over x. And what you need to remember about this one is that anything inside the absolute uh, 
value uh, brackets, when you evaluate that absolute value, it becomes positive. So the absolute value of 5 is 5, the absolute value of negative 5 is 5, and the absolute value of 0 is 0 because 0 is neither negative nor positive. So let's start with part A. Uh, so once again, we're just going to plug in 2 wherever we see x. And so we're going to get f of 2 is equal to the absolute value of 2 over 2. Well, the absolute value of 2 is just going to be 2. Remember, we want to make it positive. And since 2 is already positive, it just remains 2. So that's 2 over 2, which is 1. So that's our answer for part A. Then for part B, we have f of negative 2. So I'm going to write f of negative 2 equals the absolute value of negative 2 over 2. And because anything inside the absolute value brackets becomes positive when evaluated, negative 2 is going to become 2. And uh, this positive 2 is just going to remain positive 2. And then that's going to evaluate to 1 as well. then this f of x minus 1 might seem a little bit trickier but all we're going to do is going to plug that into the x wherever we see x we're going to plug in x minus 1 so I'm going to get f of x minus 1 is equal to the absolute value of x minus 1 over x minus 1 and that's going to be our answer and so you might be thinking well why didn't you evaluate this absolute value why didn't you make it into x plus 1 well, that's, that's because we don't know what x is at this point in time. So we can't evaluate for sure the absolute value and say that it's x plus 1 because what if x is 5? 5 minus 1 is already positive and our answer would be 4. But if we evaluated it to be x plus 1 in here, then we would get 5 plus 1 is 6. So uh, that's why I didn't evaluate the absolute value right there. Okay, so in this next question, we are asked to evaluate the function at each specified value of the independent variable and simplify. And our function now is piecewise defined, which remember, it means it's defined in pieces. And maybe that doesn't make a lot of sense just saying that, but uh, we'll see what that means when we start to evaluate this function. So our function is f of x equals and it's equal to 2x plus 1 when x is less than 0 and it's equal to 2x plus 2 when x is greater than or equal to 0 and that's what I mean by it's defined in pieces there are really two different equations that we use depending on what our x value is and so in that way it's kind of like two pieces make one function in this case <coughs> excuse me so for part a we're going to do f of negative 1 and then we're going to look at our piecewise defined parameters here and we see that well negative 1 is not greater than 0 but negative 1 is less than 0 so we're going to use this top function right here so I'm gonna have 2 times negative 1 plus 1 so that's gonna be negative 2 plus 2 or plus 1 sorry negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1 and that's going to be our answer for part A. And then for part B, we're going to do f of 0. And so we look here, and f of 0 is equal to 0, which is in the parameter greater than or equal to. So I'm going to do f of 0 equals 2 times 0 plus 2. And anything times 0 is 0, so I'm just going to be left with 2. And that's going to be my answer for part B. And then for part C, we're going to do f of 2. Well, uh, 2 is greater than 0, so we're going to use this bottom function. So I'm going to do f of 2 equals 2 times 2 plus 2. So 2 times 2 is 4. So I have 4 plus 2, which is 6. And that's going to be my answer for part C. Okay, so in this next problem, we're given the exact same instructions to evaluate the function at each specified value of the independent variable and simplify. And our function f of x is once again piecewise defined, but this time it's defined in three pieces. 
and our first piece is that f of x is equal to 3x minus 1 when x is less than negative 1, f of x is equal to 4 when x is between negative 1 and 1, and f of x is equal to x squared when x is greater than 1. So let's start with part a, f of negative 2. Well, negative 2 is less than negative 1, so I'm going to use this top function. So I'm going to say f of negative 2 is equal to 3 times negative 2 minus 1. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, so we have neg negative 6 minus 1, which is just negative 7. And that's going to be our answer for part A. For part B, we have f of negative 1 half. Well, negative 1 half is greater than negative 1, so we're not going to use the top function, but negative 1 half is less than 1, but greater than negative 1. So we're going to use this uh, middle function right here. And if you notice, it just says f of x is equal to 4. There's no spot where we can plug in the x value negative 1 half, because if you think about it, f of x equals 4 is uh, just going to be a, a straight line, basically. So for this one, f of negative 1 half is just going to be 4. Then for f of 3, 3 is uh, greater than negative 1. Uh, it's not between negative 1 and 1, but it is greater than 1. So we're going to use this uh, bottom function down here. So I'm going to say f of 3 is equal to 3 squared. Like that. And 3 squared is 9. So that's going to be our answer for part C. And that's how you do that problem. Okay, so in this next problem, we are asked to complete the table and we're given the function uh, in order to complete the table and our function is f of x equals x squared minus 3 and the values they want us to plug into that function are f of negative 2, f of negative 1, f of 0, f of 1, and f of 2. So let's start with f of negative 2. f of negative 2 is going to be equal to negative 2 squared because remember we're plugging in negative 2 wherever we see x minus 3. Negative 2 squared is going to be positive 4 minus 3 is 1. f of negative 1 is going to be a similar process except instead of plugging in negative 2 wherever we see x we're going to be plugging in negative 1 wherever we see x which is going to give us negative 1 squared minus 3. And negative 1 squared is just 1 so we have 1 minus 3 which is negative 2. Then f of 0, uh, I'm going to, I don't even have to write this down because I know that anything, uh, anything 0 raised to any power is just going to be 0, so there's just going to be negative 3. So then now I get down to f of 1, so I'm going to have 1 squared minus 3 1 squared is just 1 minus 3 is negative 2 or 1 minus 3 is negative 2 I mean so we have uh, f1 is negative 2 then we do f of 2 so that's going to be 2 squared minus 3 2 squared is 4, so we have 4 minus 3, which is just 1, and there we go. The table is completed. Okay, so in this next problem, we're getting the exact same instructions, but now we have a different table and a different function. Our function now is g of x equals the square root of x minus 3, and the x minus 3 is under the square root, that's why I included them in parentheses, and our table is uh, g of 3, g of 4, g of 5, g of 6, and g of 7. So now that you saw how to do the last one, I want you to pause this video, try this on your own, and then come back to the problem when you're finished and we'll see how you did. So assuming you've al already tried the problem, let's see, how we, let's see how you did. So we're going to start off with g of 3. I'm going to do g of 3. Let me draw a brighter parentheses g of 3 is equal to the square root of 3 minus 3. 
which is the square root of 0 and with this is just going to be 0 so g of 3 is 0 then we do g of 4 that's going to be the square root of 4 minus 3 remember we're just um, we're just plugging in whatever x value we're given uh, wherever we see x so 4 minus 3 is going to be 1 and the square root of 1 is just 1 then we have g of 5 and that's going to be 5 minus 3 which is just the square root of 2 and this I can't simplify any further without a calculator so I'm just going to leave it as square root of 2 uh, if your teacher lets you use a calculator then you then you can probably type that into your calculator and just do that but if your teacher doesn't let you use a calculator then square root of 2 is fine then we go to g of 6 which is the square root of 6 minus 3 which is just going to be the square root of 3 and again without a calculator there is no way for me to simplify that then we get to g of 7 which is going to be the square root of 7 minus 3 and that's going to be the square root of 4 which is 2. So g of 7 is 2 and that's our table completed. Okay so in this next problem we are asked to once again complete the table and this time our function is h of t equals 1 half times the absolute value of t plus 3. So once again I'm going to just work my way through all of these t values in the table and fill out what the uh, output for each specified t value would be. So let's start with uh, h of negative 5. So h of negative 5 is going to be 1 half times negative 5 plus 3. And the negative 5 plus 3 is surrounded by absolute value brackets and I've put it in parentheses uh, just to clarify that we're going to be multiplying it by one half. So negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. So we're left with uh, one half times the absolute value of negative 2. And as we know, anything in the absolute value brackets is just going to be the positive version of that value when evaluated. So the absolute value of negative 2 is just going to be positive 2. And 1 half times 2, we can do some cross-reducing here to find that it's 1. So h of negative 5 is 1. Then we do h of negative 4. h of negative 4 is going to be a, a very similar process. It's just going to be 1 half times the absolute value of negative 4 plus 3. And then that's going to give us 1 half times the absolute value of negative 1. And the absolute value of negative 1 is just 1, so we're left with 1 half times 1, which is just 1 half. So h of negative 4 is 1 half. And then I'm going to bring an eraser in, so make sure if you need to write this down, you've written it down. So next is h of negative 3. And that's going to be 1 half times the absolute value of negative 3 plus 3. Well, look at this. Negative 3 plus 3 
is just going to be 0. So the absolute value of 0 is 0, and 1 half times 0 is 0. So I don't even need to write out multiple steps for this. I can just say it's 0. h of negative 3 is 0. Then we do h of negative 2. which is 1 half times the absolute value of negative 2 plus 3 and the uh, negative 2 plus 3 is just going to be 1 so it's 1 half times 1 or times the absolute value of 1 rather but the absolute value of 1 uh, let me write it like that so it's clear that it's 1 the absolute value of 1 is just 1, and 1 times 1 half is just 1 half. So h of negative 2 is 1 half, and then h of 1, or h of negative 1 rather, is going to be 1 half times the absolute value of uh, negative 1 plus 3. Well, negative 1 plus 3 is just 2, and the absolute value is uh, the absolute value of 2 is still 2. So we're left with 1 half times 2 at the end of it all, which through some cross-reducing we'll find is 1. So that's the table filled out. Okay, so in this next problem we're once again asked to complete the table, and we're given a, uh, a table, uh, and it goes from negative 2 to 2. But this time our function is defined piecewise in two pieces. And the first piece is that f of x is equal to 1 half x plus 4 when x is less than or equal to 0. But f of x is equal to x minus 2 uh, squared, like the whole x minus 2 and then that squared, when x is greater than 0. So once again, I'm just going to uh, fill out the different x values and write what their f of x outputs would be. So for f of negative 2, I'm going to have 1 half, uh, well first let's, let's discuss why I'm using the top equation. It's because that uh, uh, the parameter is when x is less than or equal to 0, that's when we use the top equation and negative 2 is less than or equal to 0. So 1 half times negative 2 plus 4. Well, through some cross reduction, we see that 1 half times negative 2 is negative 1. So we have negative 1 plus 4, which is 3. Then we have uh, f of negative 1. Negative 1 is less than 0. So we're going to have 1 half. Uh, 1 half times negative 1 plus 4. And 1 half times negative 1 is just negative 1 half plus 4. And this I know is uh, 3 and a half, but if I wanted it in like improper form, then I can do 1 half plus 8 over 2. Because 8 divided by 2 is still 4, but it's also in a form where we can do. Uh, this arithmetic to it. So negative 1 plus 8 is just 7. So f of negative 1 is 7 halves, which is just 3 and a half. Then we do f of 0. And we're still going to use the top function here because it says x is less than or equal to 0, and 0 is equal to 0. So uh, I'm just going to do this all in one step. 1 half times 0 is just 0. That's just going to leave us with 4. So f of, uh, f of 0 is 4. Then we have f of 1, and here we're going to switch to this bottom function. And so that's going to leave me with, in parentheses, 1 minus 2, and that quantity will be squared. 1 minus 2 is negative 1, so I'm going to have negative 1 squared, which is just 1. So f of 1 is 1. Then I'm going to have f of 2. And again, I'm just going to do this in two steps, because, or zero, uh, like one step. Because 2 minus 2 is 0, and 0 squared is 0. 
so f of 2 is 0. And that's that table completed. Okay, so in this next question, we're asked to find all real values of x such that f of x equals 0. And our f of x is 15 minus 3x. So what I'm going to do here is just set f of x equal to 0. Or I'm going to replace f of x with 0, rather. And then I'm going to say 0 equals 15 minus 3x. And this becomes a basic algebraic expression. And if it's unclear why I made f of x equal to 0, it's because uh, we're trying to find the values of x such that f of x will, e will be 0. So by making f of x already 0, I can just solve for x. And then at the very end, if I wanted to check my answer, if I'm not sure, I can plug in that x value back into the original equation. And if it equals 0, then I know, then I know I've done the right thing. So I'm going to subtract 15. And I'm going to have negative 15 equals negative 3x. Divide by negative 3 on both sides. And x is equal to 5. And then if I wanted to check my answer, I can just plug in 5 to this original equation. I can say f of 5 equals 15 minus 3 times 5. 3 times 5 is 15, so I'm going to have 15 minus 15. And that's going to be 0. And 0 does equal 0, so I know, I, I know I've done the right thing. Okay, so in this next problem, we're once again asked to find all real values of x, such that f of x equals 0. And our function this time is f of x equals x squared minus 9. So I'm going to do the exact same thing here, just make f of x equal to 0. I'm going to have x squared minus 9. So I'm going to add 9 to both sides. And I'm going to have 9 equals x squared. And remember, we undo a square by taking the square root. So x is going to be plus or minus 3. And if you're confused as to why it's plus or minus, Think about it like this: uh, when you uh, when you when you square something like this, when you do x squared, you're saying that thing multiplied by itself. So three times three will give you nine, but negative three times negative three will also give you nine. So that's why. So your answer is going to be plus or minus three. And that's what this little symbol here means. It just means plus or minus. And once again, uh, you can check your answer by just plugging in positive 3 for here and negative 3 for here. For both of those cases, you should get 9 minus 9, which is 0. Okay, so in this next one, we're given the exact same instructions, but now our function is x cubed minus x. So we have two x's in this equation, and one of them is raised to the third power, and the other one's not as raised to the first power. So once again, I'm just going to make f of x equal to 0. So I'm going to have 0 equals x cubed minus x. And from here, I can actually factor out an x. So I have x times x squared minus 1. And these two are the same thing. x cubed minus x is the same thing as x times x squared minus 1. Because if we distributed this x, we'd get x cubed minus x. And we can factor this further because x squared minus 1 is a, uh, is it like a difference of perfect squares. So it's going to be x plus 1 and then x minus 1 equals 0. So now if I'm looking at all the x values that would make this 0, the first one I'm going to say is x equals 0. That would make the whole thing equal to 0 because we'd have 0 multiplied by two things, which would just be 0. And then also, x equals plus or minus 1. Because if I plug it in negative 1 here, I'd get 0 multiplied by two different things. It'd still be 0. 
And if I plug in the positive one here, I'd get zero multiplied by two different things. It'd still be zero. So yeah, those would be your answers for that one. Okay, so in this next problem, uh, we're asked to find all real values of x such that f of x equals g of x. And now we're given two functions, f of x equals x squared and g of x equals x plus 2. So this problem may seem difficult at first, but uh, you just have to realize that uh, that's probably the solution is simpler than what you may be thinking. So let's write out what they want. f of x equals g of x. And now we have those things right here. We have f of x and we have g of x. So I'm going to write x squared equals x plus 2. And this may be, this may seem tricky, but we can actually uh, make this into a quadratic equation if we subtract x and 2. So we're going to have x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. And now this is a quadratic equation that we should be able to factor. So we're going to ask ourselves what multiplies to negative 2 but adds to negative 1. And that's going to be uh, negative 2 and 1, positive 1. Those would multiply to negative 2 and add to negative 1. So I'm going to have x minus 2 times x plus 1 equals 0. And in order for this equation to be 0, just one of these quantities has to be 0 because then we'd have 0 multiplied by something which would be 0. So I'm going to separate these into x minus 2 equals 0 and x plus 1 equals 0. And then in that case we get x equals 2 and x equals negative 1. So at x equals 2 and x equals negative 1, f of x and g of x are the same value. Uh, you can check that because, let's say, for x equals 2, for example, 2 squared is 4 and 2 plus 2 is 4. So that we know is right. And then for negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1 and negative 1 plus 2 is 1. So we know that we've done it right there as well.